Hello there and welcome to this video introducing you to the new ZAM tree map. Now the tree map is a control that will help you visualize your data in sort of a hierarchical tree-like fashion using different types of geometries. In this case we're using rectangles in order to display out the data. Now what I did was created a page that attempted to visualize the amount of space that's being taken up within folders. So you can see here that on my backup drive, USB backup one, that the data folder has the most and then down to the archive installs and then the raw video on my primary hard disk my user folder and then windows and then program files so what I'd like to do is bring you now into Visual Studio and show you how to set this up for yourself so here we are in Visual Studio 2010 and what I'd like to do is start with the, the lowest common denominator for the sample and move our way up all the way into the XAML and so within the drives we're visualizing the folders and so I just created a very simple model object here for a folder and I just have two properties the name and then the size in bytes now this is an in64 because the values are, are going to be quite large but obviously any type of model that you would use would be appropriate for visualization so the folders belong to drives so the drive has a list of folders and this has been lazy initialized so as soon as the program accesses this property for the first time if the folders are null then we'll go ahead and create that array for the object and then along with the folders the drive will have a letter and then also a name so those are the two basic working pieces that we need to carry around data in order to make the sample to work so now let's move in to the view model now this is the squarified view model because the the tree map can use a, a couple different algorithms in order to handle the display layout and the squarified one is the one that I showed you within this sample and it basically tries to use rectangles or squares in order to approximate the relative size of the data within the, the, the tree so this is the squarified view model and we have a list of drives when the drives gets hit for the first time if uh, the, the array is null then I'll instantiate a, a list of those drives and then we'll initialize data within the view model and this works well so that I can hook up the view model into my page um, declaratively and don't have to worry about building anything into the code behind. And then finally, once we have an instance of drives, we'll just return that up. And then we've got our standard support here for iNotify property changed within the view model. I have a parameter list constructor, and then basically here when I call initialize, this is just the code that's being run in order to build up the data for the sample. Obviously, your data would come from somewhere else, perhaps a service, perhaps a database, perhaps a text file, anywhere else. But here I'm just building it up in memory so that we can return it up to the view. So once I create a drive, then I'll add some folders to it. And the way I got these values was uh, one day I just right clicked on the folders in, in my machine and, and pulled out those values. And so these are representative of, of the real kind of data you might find within a, a development machine. And so I have my C drive and my F drive, and I just added that into the drives collection. And so once I have that, the initialize method is being called again from this uh, property initializer, and then it'll return up those drives to the view. Now, like I said, I didn't have any code in the code behind, and this is here to prove it. Um, this is a pretty basic sample, and so I don't really need anything. Obviously, if I needed to put something here, I could, but for now, I can go ahead and leave it blank. And that brings us up to the XAML for this sample. So obviously the first thing that I need to do is make sure I'm bringing in the correct namespace in order to make the tree map available. And so in this case what I'm doing is bringing in infragistics.controls.charts and also I'm bringing in my view model. And so this is the namespace for my view model. It's the name of the project.views.treeMap and then I can then be able to reference the squarified view model. So I give it a key of view model so that I can set the data context within the, the layout root equal to the view model within our static resources collection. So now we get down to the tree map. In the tree map, you need to be aware of a couple different things. You have node binders and you have value mappers. So the node binders gives you the collection of things that you are trying to visualize. And so in this case, I have two things. I have drives and I have folders. Now, because of the way that I did the view model I get some design time data binding going and you can see here that I have a drive within this outer rectangle here uh, for the backup and then also for the primary hard disk and then the folders are being rendered out underneath it according to the the correct algorithm of, of the chart so the way I create those binders is I have my node binder and I say target type name is drive 
If you remember the class from earlier, it was name drive, and the text path is name. And so let's take a look at our view model. You can see that when I created this, the letter is C, but the name is primary hard disk. So that way, the, the text path here is what shows up as the primary label within that node in the chart. And then the item source, source path is equal to folders. So when the chart attempts to load the, the child data, it knows to look on the object and look under the folder path. So now that we're down into the next node here, we have the target type name equal to folder. I'm looking for the size in bytes, and the text path I'm looking for is name. So the size in bytes is what gives each rectangle its relative size, and then it's labeled with its name. The next thing that we need to take a look at is the value mappers. And what the value mappers do is gives you the way to customize how the values are rendered out to the user. And so the value path that I'm looking at is the size in bytes. And if you remember, that comes from the folder class. And I'm rendering from red to blue because the way we're showing this data is through its relative nature to one another. So we'll, we'll do that with color, starting with one basic color, going to the other, so that as the values move from one end of the spectrum to the other, the, the colors will change as well. And I have the data maximum and the data minimum set up to what's appropriate based off of the values that I have coming in. And I tell it to fill the items, and I'm mapping to all of the nodes. So that's the basic setup of it. I did skip one part here up at the top, and to say that the layout type is squarified. And again, there are other layout types based off of the, the algorithms available for tree mapping uh, types of visualizations. So there's slice and dice, squarified, and strip. So for this instance, we'll stick with squarified, and I'm simply binding the item source to the drives property of my view model. And so if we run it one more time, you'll see that we get a nice visualization of the drives and folders on my machine. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.